impedance matching is a very critical idea in circuits when it comes to power delivery. Many times there's a part of a circuit that generates or is sourcing energy. And there's another area, a part of a circuit that's job is to absorb or take in, dissipate that energy. Let's think about this a little bit. We've got some, let's diagram this up as some voltage source. A resistor, this is gonna be a purely resistive circuit, RS. That's the source, right? So this represents the voltage that's being generated and the current that's gonna flow through it. And let's tag this as RL, which is the load. And this can be any load that consumes energy. This can be your laptop, it can be a light bulb, it can be a motor, it can be a car, it doesn't matter. But for the purposes of this, uh, a car motor, this is going to be just a resistive load that's going to consume the energy that's being provided by the circuit. And one of the questions that is often important to ask is, if you are building or creating this load, right, if you have control over the load and you can choose different parameters about it, how do you choose an RL such that you maximize the amount of power delivered to it? So this might seem like a funny, a funny idea, but let's work through it. If power again is equal to V times I, then, and I'm not worrying about RMS or anything right now. This is just to get the intuition through. Because this could just as easily be a, a, DC, a DC value. It doesn't matter. For, for resistive circuits, it's purely resistive circuits. It's simple. We have V times I. And what, you are, what we're really interested in is figuring out what the voltage drop across RL is and making that as big as possible. Uh, sorry, what this is, and making the power consumed, the voltage of this times the current that's flowing through it, as much as we can, as high as we can. And so intuitively, you might say, well, we know that this is proportional to I squared R. This is the same thing, right? Power is just I squared R as well. And since resistance is proportional to power, just make RL as big as you want, and you're good to go. Similarly, you might say, well, <coughs> similarly, you might say, well, hang on a second. It's also equal to V squared over R. And so in that case, you want R to be as low as possible to make this P as big as possible. Now, the issue, of course, is that the current that's flowing is going to be, you know, is going to be different based on the resistance. And further, the voltage drop across the resistance relative to the, to, the, to the load resistance versus the source resistance is also going to be different. So before we get all confused, right, the goal is to maximize P, make P as big as possible. And so the first thing to do is to recognize that I here is explicitly defined and can be defined with just these three terms of V, R, R V, and R2, R. So let's do that first to start getting some sense into this. We know that V equals IR. That means I is going to equal V over R. And so we have V over the total, the total resistance here, which is just RS plus RL. RS plus RL. And now we can take this I and put it into our power equation right here, right? I squared R. And let's see what that gets us. Now, we are, of course, solving this for the resistive load. So P of RL, or we'll just put that as PL, the power dissipated by the load, since there's only one current, we can use this current, V over RS plus RL times, well, square it first, squared times what? Times the resistance of the load, which is RL. And so now we have an equation that effectively we simply have to maximize. And that's not too bad. So let's just distribute this out for a moment and see what we get. We get V squared over RS squared plus 2RSRL, that's supposed to be an L, plus RL squared, I'm just factoring that through. All of this, though, is going to get multiplied by RL, so RL here, 
And because that's still messy and there's a bunch of RL terms down here, let's just divide both sides of, the, of, this, of this fraction by RL because that doesn't change anything. And so we're gonna divide by, we're gonna divide by RL and we're gonna divide by RL and we're gonna get out b squared over rs squared over rl plus 2rs plus rl. That's not bad. That's actually somewhat approachable. Now, the goal again was to maximize this, right? So when you have anything that you want to maximize, the goal is to, is to think about this equation and realize that we're not changing V, V is fixed. And so that's just a constant that can come out. That's just one over this. And PL, the power of the load here is gonna be maximized when? When this denominator is as small as possible. And of course, when we say it's as small as possible, we're just, gonna, we're just going to set the derivative with respect to RL and see what we get. So we're gonna take this derivative and set it equal to zero and solve it. Because when, when this equation gets us to, we're effectively done. So we're gonna take the derivative of this thing with respect to RL, RS squared over RL plus two RS plus RL. Oops, that's not supposed to be, supposed to look I mean, you could take the full derivative of this entire thing, but it, it doesn't really matter because it'll get you the same answer because um, you're still looking for the, for the minimum terms where the derivative isn't changing anymore. So what is this equal to? Well, this is just going to come out and be negative rs squared because it's one over rl, negative rs squared divided by R L squared, right? That negative one goes up. This two R S term here just goes away because there's no R L, so that disappears. And this R L simply becomes one. So this is plus one. And so if we're setting this equal to zero, then that means our, this negative sign goes away because if we flip this over, it comes negative one and the negatives cancel out. And we end up with an equation that looks something like this. We get R squared S over R L squared is equal to one. If we move that over, look at what we're saying. We're saying that R S squared is equal to R L squared. And of course that has two solutions, right? It can be plus or minus of each of these to get the same thing but there's no such thing as negative resistances. So the only valid solution is RS equals RL. And that will give you the value of RL such that you've maximized the power going through it. That's actually pretty neat. At any other value of RL, you are either increasing the current, yes, but decreasing the voltage drop across RL relative to RS such that RS is burning more power because it has a larger resistance. That's what happens if RL goes down. But if RL goes up relative to RS, what's happening? Well, then what you're doing is you're in, in, inappropriately decreasing the current because RS plus RL is growing. And even though you may have a larger voltage drop over RL, you have a smaller total current and thus your power is still smaller. And thus the sweet spot is of course where RS and RL are equal such that this is the highest amount of current that you can generate while still 
allowing while still having a, an equal voltage drop across these two. And that actually, if you think about it for a moment, does make sense. Because you never want to be burning more power. You never want to have a larger voltage drop over this than this. Because the moment you do, you know that this guy is burning more power than this is. At the same time, if you have way too much of a voltage drop here, you are squashing your current unnecessarily. And so, of course, that beautiful sweet spot is where these two are the same. And that came out in this equation. So impedance matching for resistive circuits is where RS is equal to RL. The same general rules apply for circuits that have complex impedance. But there, you have to keep in mind the fact that in complex impedance, you have an angle, theta, where this is x and this is r, and you have some theta here, and this is z. And the key to remember is that only the resistive component burns power, consumes power, right? Purely reactive components burn no power at all. And so if you have some Z here, ZS and some Z load, then showing the, the, the value for Z load that burns the most power, that, can, that will then you know, pass the most power onto the load is going to have to deal with this fact that if there's a strong reactive component in the source here, right? If these were if these were ZS and and ZL instead, you have to compensate for the fact that there's a ZL here, I oh, sorry, a ZS here that may be pushing the impedance into the imaginary space and thus right, losing out on the potential power you could be burning. How do you fix that? if you have control over, over the load. Well, the way you fix that is you perform impedance matching. And you, your goal is to make this system as much resistive as possible. Because the closer this is to a purely resistive circuit, right, along this point here, then the more of the total potential energy that's in the impedance, you're actually going to be able to, to, to convert. So you not only have to match the real components of resistance in, 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 a, in a complex impedance, but you have to cancel out the, re, the reactive component. And thus, for the situation of impedance, uh, of, of complex impedance, max power is not only where the resistances are the same, but where the reactances are conjugates, right? They cancel each other out. If you have some positive contribution or reactance from the, from the source, you're gonna to need to negate that in the load, in the negative space, so that it pulls this net impedance vector as close to purely resistive as possible. And thus, ZS is gonna be equal to, sorry, we should put a ZL. ZL, if you're choosing it, is going to be equal to the complex conjugate. That's usually denoted by a star of the source impedance. Where here, right, the resistances match, but the reactive components are exactly pi over two, uh, sorry, pi away from each other so that in magnitude, they're the same on the reactive side, but then when applied, right, on the other end, so if, let's say our orange was our, our load resistance, if this was source, our re source reactance, and this was our, our, our load reactance, then after applying this, you would get the resistance pushed further, and this would pluck the reactance down so that it was purely resistive. And that's why maximum power delivery occurs on a complex system 
at at the complex conjugates. You can do the same math to show this, and it's actually very important to do so, but the intuition behind why that's the value for max power is all seen out in the phasor diagrams here. 